about but it's going to be your voices and your skills as communication so let's look at the criteria for this around the criteria in today's debate round is going to be that of net benefits what it should be for a policy case no matter how interesting it is so let's start off with first looking at some background information i'd like to look at the resolution and look at kind of the framers intent of the resolution when you look at the background of the information my first background is looking at lyrical analysis this is from a song by Snoop Dogg called Drop It Like It's Hot. That does not mean run away from something that is bad, but in essence, walk into something that is good, to celebrate something that's good. When the pimp's in the crib, Ma, you should drop it like it's hot. You should celebrate something that's good. So that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to celebrate something that's good throughout this case. We believe that we are working along with the framers intent of this resolution. With that, I have two specific harms in the current system. Harm number one, is that students, yes, I'll take your first of clarification. So what does the opposition have to do for this? Essentially, I don't know what the arguments will kind of just roll with it now. Okay, come close. Okay, because we have the right to define it, right? Great. Okay, let's look at harm number one. Harm number one is that students value Sports over debate. Now, sub point A under this is looking how right now in the current system, the majority of students at UT are looking at valuing sports. Now, sub point B under this is you look at this interest, most of this interest is looked at in terms of fans. And we all know that some fans have really good communication tactics. And we feel like they should take those communication tactics and not just use them in the sports arena, but take them and use them on something intellectual and take it and use it um, for something that would uh, be beneficial and work towards their college education, which would be something like debate. So the impact of this is that if more students are interested in sports, they are less likely to get interested in the debate team and thus just decrease the value of the education that you have at UT. Now, the second harm I have under this is that the college itself values sports over debate. Now, sub point A under this is that people all know that many times colleges are known more for their sports than they are for their debate. So point B <laughs> under this is looking at how right now in the current system, UT is fighting for to try to get a program and try to get a, try to get a coach and try to move towards a place where they can actually have some standing in the system. And we feel like that they should have the right to do so and move towards that. So point C under this is that we should be looking towards edu intellectual activities. When we look at the idea of college and we do not feel like the college should be valuing sports over the idea and the intellectual ideas of debate when actually debate costs far less money than a football team or than a basketball team. And my final point under this is looking at the email that we all got from Nathan <laughs> saying that they value sports so much that we had to get here early to avoid a $10 parking fee. This is a huge problem and so the impact of this is that the school is actually hindering the intellectual activities of its students by not valuing the debate program. So we feel like this is a problem and it's something that the MPDA students of UT should stand up against and they should celebrate what their mother gave them. So I'd like to look at the following plan. The agency and the enforcement will be the MPDA debaters. Now the biggest point, yeah, I'll take your second of three. Yeah, still for more clarification. When you say celebrate what their mama gave them, what exactly are you referring to? I'm about to get into it when I discuss their plan, but I'm talking about their communication skills and their abilities to win arguments, their abilities to stand up and say, we need something. So they should celebrate it and they should highlight it in this following way. Now the biggest point under this plan, before I get into the mandate, is that there will be no funding. 
which is wonderful for college students because we have no money. So that's <laughs> great. So let's look at the mandate. Manda our only mandate is that UT students are going to create a movement called Occupy Neyland Stadium. <laughs> so step up and they're going to say that, we are, that they are not going to remain quiet anymore, but they're going to work to argue that this is something that should be valued on UT campus. This is something that they should bring forth to the administration's attention and let it be known. That way we can have media get out there, we can have cameras that get out there, and everybody can work to look at the system and see that it's actually a problem under this system. Now let's look at some solvency points. Solvency point number one is that this is actually going to increase awareness for students. So you have students who are now going to know about the debate team, now know that it's an organization that wants to step up and they want to make a name for themselves. The second solvency point is that people follow movements. We can see in the Occupy Wall Street movement, people are starting to step up and they're starting to follow these movements. They, are, they naturally follow movements and we feel like they'll do the same thing on UT campus. Now the third uh, solvency point is that this sets a precedent for other colleges. Colleges like Covenant, colleges like Bryan, who are working to try to create uh, systems where they're no longer student run as well, we're looking towards trying to get a coach. Covenant's looking towards trying to get a coach. UT's trying to do the same thing. We're all trying to get become legitimate. Sorry, I got to get to my advantages, and we're right outside of protected time. Um, and so feel, we feel like this is going to be a precedent that's going to be set for other schools. So we have the following advantages. Advantage number one is that you're going to have more student interest. You're going to have students standing up and saying that I'd like to take my communication skills and take it from the stadium and cheering for the teams to now take a step out and say I want to be able to argue and move towards getting better education for myself. The second advantage is that we believe that this is going to make a change in the college's mentality because once something is being highlighted as being a problem, we feel like the UT administration will say that we might need to bring more scholars to this program, that we need to take a step up and give them a coach and take a step up and allow for a coach to now have the responsibility to work over this tournament rather than having Nathan work his butt off for like weeks and weeks in order to bring this into account. We feel like this is something that will be brought forth as a result of this Occupy the Stadium movement where people, where the MPDA debaters are standing up and they're saying, we have our voices, we believe in arguments and we believe in logic, so we're gonna stand up against the idea that you should value athletics over intellectual activities and that way you'll get more interest and you'll be able to use these resources widely. Shake what your mama gave you. Thank you. Please <laughs> vote in favor of the government.